Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com and I'm back here with another hand history review for you guys. So today's hand was sent to me by Adrian from Poland. Uh, he has pocket jacks, as you guys can see there in the small blind in a 1 cent, 2 cent, 6 max game. So let's just jump right into the action. So immediately it folds to Villain 9 uh, who makes a 3x raise. And actually before I say anything else, if you guys have been watching my videos for a long time, you already know what I'm going to say. The first thing that you need to look at uh, before anything in poker is stack size. And as you can see, uh, Adrian is just insanely stacked up. He has, uh, how many stacks is that? Like 10? He's got like a thousand big blinds on the table. That is absolutely crazy. The big blinds, um, good job. You <laughs> clearly have been having a good time at this table. Um, Villain 12 in the big blind. I'm not sure if he's actually in the hand, but he has over 200 big blinds himself. Villain 9, the guy who raised, and I'm going to get the HUD stats for him in a second, by the way. Uh, that guy has 450 big blinds, I believe that is. He's got almost five stacks himself. Uh, Villain 10, as you can see, a little bit deep. So this hand is mega, mega deep stack. Probably the most deep stacked hand that anybody's ever sent me uh, before. I've, I've had a couple, like, 400. I remember 400. Uh, but this Villain 9 here is almost 500 deep, and of course, uh, uh, Adrian Hero uh, has uh, a thousand big blinds, if my math is correct there. Um, let me get into the HUD data real quick for Villain 9, because he does play the prominent role in this hand, I believe. Okay, so Villain 9 is a 50-12-6, that is VPIP, PFR, and Aggression Factor. As always, if you guys don't know what those numbers mean, it's basically just data that you can get on your screen based on hands that you've already played against these guys. Use a program like Poker Tracker, uh, which I use, many people use it, uh, to help you with this. There's a link in the description below if you want to know how to get these numbers on your screen. Anyways, moving on. Um, when I see a guy who is a 50, 12, 6, immediately, that's a fish, recreational player, it's not even a question. Uh, the AF of 6 is crazy. Uh, there was a hand a couple weeks ago, we saw that. However, I believe uh, with the, the stats that Adrian gave me here, this he only has 35 hands on the guy. So... Uh, Normally, I wait for around 100 hands for uh, to be able to really say anything about uh, aggression factor. Actually, I'll include a link in the description below that'll give you guys uh, a, a link to my blog post where I, I talk about, for every single prominent HUD stat, what sample size I'm looking for. Uh, that hopefully will be helpful f for you guys. But normally with aggression factor, I'm looking for 100 hands. Only have 35 here, so I don't want to make a big deal out of an aggression factor of six. It doesn't mean the guy's necessarily crazy. Uh, he could have just had a lot of good hands in those in the 35 sample. So, anyways, but the, uh, as I always talk about, VPIP and PFR those converge to their true values m on a much much lower sample size. You only need like 20 hands is good enough. So we have more than enough hands to know that this guy definitely is playing roughly 50% of his hands and only raising with 12%, which is the classic, classic fish recreational player stats. So uh, we'll keep that in mind that throughout this hand, this guy is uh, very, very loose and can have, honestly, almost any two cards. So uh, let's move along there. Uh, so Villain11 calls on the button. I don't have any stats on him. I don't think he played a, a prominent role in the hand. So what should Adrian do in a spot like this? What should we do? It, it's kind of a tricky spot, guys. we got pocket jacks. We're insanely deep, uh, but I'm going to say that definitely we should just go ahead and raise here. I really don't see any re-raise, so I don't see any reason why not. Uh, we are so far ahead of a guy's range who's opening 50% of hands. Um, I don't mind getting some money in the middle there and popping up that pot. Another thing that I really like to do versus recreational players, fish in general, is, is really just pop some money into that pot in the uh, preflop, especially when I have a strong hand, because I feel like it makes them more willing to fight for it post flop they they see a they see just more in there a bigger pie you know so and i think it it makes them do a lot more crazy stuff and way when we're over five when we're close to 500 big blinds deep i'm hoping for some crazy stuff out of this guy especially if i had a strong hand so uh well adrian actually does not agree with my analysis and just decides to call uh, i do think that's a mistake uh, i'm not gonna beat around the bush with it i definitely do think you need to be raising for value here. You're also out of position here. So I want to force them to play, pay a price uh, in order to uh, to see a hand uh, with me when we're at a positional disadvantage. You know, they have, they're in position against us here. So for all of these reasons, def I mean, just the strength of our hand alone, I, I think that we definitely need to be three betting here. 
However, we're just going to uh, uh, move along here and see what happens. Villain 12 somehow folds his hand. I have no idea. I guess he had the seven deuce offsuit. And we move on to a flop. So obviously it's a real good one. So it's going to be on Adrian, of course, to act first. He decides to bet out. Um, I don't actually, I'm going to agree with this now. Actually, I, I, I like it. Um, usually not a huge fan of donk betting. I prefer to go for a kind of check raise, but in a situation like this where it's just mega, mega deep, I would love to be able to get a three bet in on the flop where basically we donk bet, he raises, and then we re-raise. I would love to be able to do that almost 500 big blinds deep. And I think this is a great board to do it on as well because there's an ace on there, which is, you know, recreational players just love their aces. I mean, he's going to be in here with, he's going to be playing basically every ace, every ace in the deck. And there's a lot of draws as well on this board, like the queen 10, there's a bunch of gut shots, like king 10, king queen, stuff like that. So I think that a uh, recreational player is going to be uh, definitely going to be hanging around with hands like that. Um, uh, he just calls, unfortunately, but uh, I, I do like the the idea of donking out here and hoping to get a raise so that we can re-raise. Uh, villain 11 goes away, and we'll go to a turn. So uh, it, it's a really good turn card for us. It, it doesn't complete any draws. It doesn't even add a flush draw, nothing. So what should we do here? Uh, you know, you can get fancy and go for a check raise in a spot like, that, uh, a spot like this, sort of like feigning weakness, like we're just, you know, hey, we we're just kind of bluffing. On, on the turn or on the on the flop and uh now mr big man villain nine you know when we check he's gonna put in the bat and wow we're gonna check raises ass of course um so i do like that line uh but you know i mean betting out here can can work as well i guess kind of either or i guess see what adrian does he does decide to come out for the bat and he comes out for the over bat i actually like that a lot um yeah i really like that um I've talked about overbetting before, especially in Crushing the Microstakes, my first book, and I think I've probably talked about it in many YouTube videos here and blog posts as well. I love overbetting at the micros, guys. It is awesome, especially when you're this deep. Um, you know, it really messes with their head as well, especially recreational players. A lot of them take it as like a personal insult that this guy's like the bully and, and he's trying to uh, push us around and... Because a lot of recreational players, that's kind of, as I talk about in Crushing the Microstakes, that's kind of their thing, is they like to play the sheriff. You know, they're like, this guy is not going to bluff me. And um, so I love it. I love the, uh, I, yeah, I think if we're going to donk out here, we should uh, definitely go for the overbet. I'd actually make it more. I'd make it like uh, 82 cents or a $1.20 or something. <laughs> uh, but, but I love the idea. I love the creative bet sizing. So uh, Villain9 uh, decides to just call. Uh, he's one of these passive fish, so that's what they do, of course. And we go to a river, and that is obviously a, uh, it's a pretty good river for us. Um, uh, this spot's really interesting. Um, I've talked about the massive overbet once again in Crushing the Microstakes. I talked about, I had an entire section about the massive overbet on the river and how I've made an absolute fortune using that over the years. I'm not sure what Adrian does here yet. We're going to get into that in a sec. Um, but th honestly, this isn't the greatest board to do it because, well, we have the board completely crushed. There's really nothing. I mean, unless he has pocket aces somehow or pocket nines or pocket pocket fives are unlikely. But, you know, unless he somehow has some huge monster like that, it's going to be pretty hard for him to make the massive uh, hero call. Uh, let's see what Adrian does here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, four dollars. That's beautiful. Yeah, definitely. I love the uh, the overbetting here. Yeah, I definitely love the overbetting here. I, I I actually didn't even think about doing that. I was only thinking regular bet versus ship all in. I actually really once again like the uh, double pot, uh, roughly double pot overbet in a spot like this. I think this is once again gonna make this player think that this guy. That, you know, we're a bully, we're trying to push him around, and hey, I've got ace three, and I'm calling you down, and uh, that's exactly what he does. I actually don't know what he has, let's see. Oh, yeah, he's queen. Okay, so he had a bit better ace than I give him credit for. And uh, we win a, uh, how many stacks is that? And we win a 500 big blind pot. Uh, I don't think I even need to tell you guys how good pots like this are for your win rate. This is rocket fuel for your win rate right here. This is kind of, I actually love the way that Adrian played this hand. This is, you know, when I was posting all those crazy uh, numbers over the years, the, the the win rates and the 20 big blind per 100, 30 big blind per 100 and winning 
uh, tens of thousands of dollars in these games. This is exactly what I was doing. I was sitting ultra deep stacked with massive, massive fish like this. And I know you only hit your quads. Somebody's going to say, oh my god, yeah, but he has quads. Yes, I, I get it. You only hit quads one out of every 4,000 hands, I believe it is. But you don't need quads. We could have hit, we could have had pocket fives here and the same thing. As you guys can see, the, he, the guy can't fold ace queen for anything. He shipped 250 big blinds in the pot. Um, so I love the, uh, the, the creativity here. And this is really what you can do. You can really just absolutely destroy these games when you get in these ultra deep stack situations um, and use creative overbetting strategies like this. So overall, Adrian, very, very well played. Uh, I A plus in my opinion. <laughs> um, you did great. Um, as always, I want to know uh, your guy, everyone else though. I want to know your thoughts on this hand. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoy seeing MicroStake strategy videos like this, make sure you give this video a like. And also make sure you subscribe to my poker channel here is because I'm also putting out videos like this roughly every single week. Uh, once again, as I always state, I'm the only guy out there on the YouTube or the blog that is focusing 100% on these stakes, the stakes that you guys actually play so that you guys understand the strategies that are actually going to work for you in the games that you're playing so you can start playing these games more profitably. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, lastly, make sure you download a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. It's called Massive Profit the Micros. Once again, it's all about the micros. No high stakes stuff in this. Um, again, it just gives you my complete strategy on how I crush these stakes. Totally free. The, it's the top link in the description below. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.